Please note, the following procedures are intended to be performed by qualified professional automotive technicians who are EPA Section 609 certified. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper MVAC service procedure when using Honeywell Solstice YF 8-ounce service cans without the use of an R1234YF MVAC service machine. However, it is always recommended that whenever possible to use a certified R1234YF MVAC machine to perform any R1234YF AC servicing procedure. Also, the following procedures are not intended for topping off of an MVAC system. For purposes of this video, it is assumed that the MVAC system has no refrigerant in it, an example being after a collision that required replacement of the condenser, etc. As always, follow standard shop safety procedures, including no open flames around the service area and the use of safety glasses and gloves. Any equipment used to perform these service procedures should conform to R1234YF certification guidelines. Honeywell Solstice YF service cans contain 8 ounces of R1234YF refrigerant. The service can has a left-handed thread self-sealing valve that requires a tap designed for R1234YF service cans. Older piercing style taps will not work with Solstice YF service cans. Before starting the service procedure, you will need the following. A digital scale capable of reading at least to a tenth of an ounce with a tear setting. A leak detector that meets SAE J2913 certification. A R1234YF vacuum pump. A R1234YF manifold gauge set. A Solstice YF service can adapter. A temperature gauge. An infrared temperature gauge is preferred. To begin the service, make sure the valves of the gauge set are closed and inspect the gauge set for damage and loose fittings. Now connect the low side and high side pressure hoses of the R1234YF gauge set to the proper fittings of the AC system. These are quick connect couplings and the low and high side couplings are not interchangeable. Now connect the vacuum pump to the middle hose of the gauge set and open the valves on the gauge set. There should be no reading on the gauges as there is no refrigerant in the system. Turn on the vacuum pump. Both gauges should be pulled into the negative. Allow around 30 minutes runtime for the vacuum pump. After the system has been pulled to a vacuum, close the valves of the gauge set and turn off the vacuum pump. Now wait for a minimum of 15 minutes. Then check the gauges again. If the gauges have not moved, this indicates the system is still in a vacuum. Remove the hose from the vacuum pump. Connect the correct R1234YF can tap to the 8 ounce service can. Make sure the valve on the tap is completely closed before connecting. Connect the middle hose of the gauge set to the can tap and fully open the tap valve. Next, slowly open the middle hose connection at the gauge set until you hear a hiss, then close again. You should open this connection for only one to two seconds to purge any air from the line. This air purging is allowed by SAE standards. You will need to use a scale during the recharge procedure to keep track of the refrigerant charge amount. R1234YF MVAC systems are critical charge systems and system performance can be greatly diminished if the system is over or under charged. The correct charge amount is usually contained on a sticker located somewhere in the engine compartment. It is recommended to double check this charge amount with the owner's manual or online resources. Now, zero reference the scale. Next, place the can with hose and tap attached on the scale and note this weight. Before proceeding to the next step, calculate 15% of the total system charge amount. This charge amount is what will be charged into the system to do a mandatory leak check, as required by SAE standards. Subtract this amount from the previous reading. This is the new reference number where you stop charging for the leak check. It should not be necessary to start the vehicle and have the AC compressor run to pull in the 15% leak test charge. Now open both the low and high side valves of the gauge set. Close the valve at the can tap when the 15% amount has been achieved. Close the valves at the gauge set and note the pressure readings on the gauge manifold. To properly complete the leak test procedure, you must wait 15 minutes after the 15% charge has been introduced into the system. You will need to verify the gauges do not indicate a pressure drop after the 15 minute wait time. 
quickly, check the system using an R1234YF leak detector. Check the underhood valve connections in addition to the condenser. Also check interior vent and evaporator areas. After it has been verified there are no leaks, open both valves at the gauge set and open the valve of the service can tap. At some point, pressure will equalize between the incoming refrigerant and the AC system, even though the full charge has not been reached. When this occurs, it is very important to close the high side valve on the gauge set and the vehicle service port. Then start the vehicle to allow the compressor to run and pull in the remaining charge from the low side port. Do not run the vehicle and the AC compressor with the high side valves in the open position. Verify the compressor is turning. On some systems that require a minimum charge to turn on the compressor, a service procedure to force the compressor to run may need to be performed. Pay attention to the scale to verify the amount of refrigerant entering the AC system. For some AC systems, it may take more than one can to completely charge the system. When changing cans, turn off the vehicle, close the low side valve of the gauge set, and close the can tap valve. Notice the amount on the scale. Remove the can from the tap and connect the tap with hose to another service can. Place the new can on the scale and note the weight. Start the vehicle again and proceed as before, adding the amount of refrigerant entering the system to the previous amount noted. Repeat these steps until the proper charge amount has been reached. Once the charge is complete, close the can tap before opening the high side valves. This will prevent overpressurizing the service can. You may now open the high side valve of the gauge set and check the pressures of both high and low sides. Charts are available for the proper readings based on ambient temperatures and humidity. Now check the interior vent temperature with a thermometer. The blower speeds do not have to be set on high. However, the system should be set to outside air, not recirculate. A vent temperature of around 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit is preferred. However, it may vary due to conditions. You may now close all valves and remove the equipment. Before installing the service port caps, look for leakage at the ports. The service is now complete. As always, properly store R1234YF refrigerant and any refrigerant to be disposed of must be done according to EPA regulations. To learn more about EPA regulations regarding proper R1234YF service procedures and Section 609 certification, please visit 1234yftraining.com.